So in this activity, uh, we're going to explore different methods of apportionment by looking at the apportionment that was put into effect um, in the elections of the United States House of Representatives in 1792, which was the first election that occurred after the very first census in 1790. I chose this election to use with my students primarily because there were fewer people in the United States then and there were fewer states and so I thought it would be a simpler example than looking at a more contemporary example where we have 315 million people and 435 representatives in the House of Representatives. That's a huge problem that's probably more than we wanted to bite off and try to chew. However, in preparing this activity for my class, I ran into some kind of sticky problems that I didn't know the answer to right away. So first thing I want you to do is do an internet search and look up the population of the United States in 1790 and also look up how many representatives were elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1792 which was the third Congress of the United States. All right, so hopefully you found those numbers. Um, and what I did in preparing for class was try to use those numbers to actually calculate the apportionment using Jefferson's method. And I ran into problems. I could not get the number of delegates that I was calculating using Jefferson's method to equal the number of delegates that were elected from each state. And I could not figure out what was going on with my calculations. So I did some more research. I did another internet search. And I found this document at the website census.gov, which is a, a photocopy of the actual census report from 1790. I'm going to see if I can. All right, so here are these numbers, and there's lots of numbers here. It's not particularly easy to read. This column is free white males, 16 years and up, free white males, under 16 years, free white females, all other free people, all other free persons, and slaves. All right, well, that was interesting, but it still didn't answer my question. Oh no. So I found another interesting document at census.gov, and this is the population board base, population base for apportionment, and the number of representatives apportioned from 1790 to 1990. So if you look at the line for 1790, the population base for apportionment was 3,615,823, which is almost 200,000 different from the total population that we found in 1790. So the question I had, why do those numbers not agree? Why is the population base for apportionment 200,000 less than the population of the United States in 1790? So maybe some of you have had some U.S. history. Maybe you haven't. Maybe it's been a long time since you had U.S. history. But ding, the light bulb went off in my head. The three-fifths compromise. Okay, the three-fifths compromise was uh, an important part of the history, the founding of our country. Um, the three-fifths compromise was the compromise between states that where there were a lot of enslaved persons and states that had very few slaves. Um, this compromise was a compromise for the apportionment process that enslaved people would count three-fifths of a person. And for some people, um, this is seen as the original sin of the United States, the, the enshrinement of slavery into the Constitution in this three-fifths compromise. So I found another document at census.gov 
um, which is a document to help students to explore the three-fifths compromise. So the, these numbers are the same numbers as are on that original facsimile copy of the 1790 census, but called out and summed so that they're easier to use. And so these are the numbers that we're going to use in exploring the effects of the three-fifths compromise on the first election that took place after the very first census in 1792.